Hey YouTubers, welcome back to the Engineering Toolbox channel where I give you the tools you need to solve real world engineering problems. I'm really excited to share this video with you. I put a ton of work into it and I think it turned out pretty well. Not to mention you're going to be learning some really cool things, so let's check it out. In this video we're going to be talking about fastened joints and how to create a really cool Excel document that can help you find the strength of various fastened joint configurations. You'll learn the basics of stress and the different types of stresses that these joints are under and the failure modes that those stresses can cause. Then I'll show you how to use Excel to assist in the calculations to figure all this out. And finally, how to use Excel solver function to optimize your joint configuration and get the maximum strength from the joint. Wow, that sounds like a lot, but don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you. Before we get into building the spreadsheet, let's first understand a little bit about stress and more specifically, what types of stresses these joints are under. So first of all, what is stress? Stress is defined as a force on an area. So if we have a certain force applied to a body, that force would be dispersed throughout each cross-sectional area that is resisting the force. In other words, stress equals a force divided by an area. The equation being sigma, the symbol for stress, equals F, or force, over A, the area. Fastened joints like these undergo three types of stress. Shear stress, tensile stress, and compressive stress. First, let's understand shear stress. Here's a cross-section view looking perpendicular to the bolt or fastener. Let's add some forces. So as these forces are applied to the base materials, there is a stress within the fastener as the base materials are forcing it in opposite directions along what's known as the shear plane. The cross-sectional area of this plane would look like this, where A equals pi times the radius of the fastener squared. If the stress in this area is greater than the ultimate shear strength of the fastener, then the fastener will fail. Just like in this real example, I'll place a line on the center axis of the bolt for reference. As the plates pull on the bolt, the forces cause a shear that eventually causes the bolt to deform and eventually fail. Next, let's look at the tensile or tearing stress that happens within the base materials. This view is looking down from the top of the plates that the fastener is holding together. As forces are added to the plates, the fastener transfers the opposing forces to each plate and creates a tension along this plane within the material. The cross-section of this plane would look like this where A, the area, equals W, the width of the plate, minus D, the diameter of the fastener, times the thickness of the plate. Now remember, tensile stress means the material is being pulled apart. So if the tensile stress exceeds the tensile strength of the material, it will cause tearing that could lead the joint to fail in this way as well. Finally, if we look down at the top of the joint again, we can see there is also a compressive or bearing stress that happens within the base material here in the area behind the hole as the fastener is forced into the material at the area of contact. Here is a cross section of this area where A equals the diameter of the fastener times the thickness of the material. Now if this stress exceeds the compressive or bearing strength of the material, the fastener will actually begin to pull through the base materials. Let's take a look at a real example of this. Look at the holes. Notice they are actually deformed or elongated from the force the bolt placed on the area behind it. Now the ultimate shear strength of the bolt was exceeded before the plate failed, but I think this demonstrates this type of stress pretty well. So now that we understand the three ways these joints can fail, we can dive into the fun stuff and do some calculations to figure out how strong our joint actually is given some parameters. I'll admit the spreadsheet does have some limitations and it makes some assumptions, but it should cover many of the typical fast and joint connections we will see in the field. For example, the spreadsheet assumes the plate thicknesses are the same. So this distance here, and this distance here are the same, this distance, and this distance, and these types of fastened joints. Um, it also assumes that the bolt diameters are the same if we have multiple bolts in our joint. And then we're also using the ultimate strengths of the materials to solve for the failure strength of the joint. So if we look here, we're using the ultimate shear, ultimate tensile, ultimate compressive, um, although those easily could be substituted for yield strength values in order to figure out the point or the strength of the joint at which it would actually start to deform, where the materials would deform. Hopefully once I go through this and we understand how the spreadsheet works, then you can modify it to your actual needs. So with that in mind, let's start going through this. Um, we have it all pretty much set up as far as the formatting and labeling goes here. Um, we can see our inputs in this column. So we're looking at the number of fasteners, the, fi the factor of safety, um, the number of shear planes, so that would be this plane here and this plane here if we have two plates on one side or multiple plates involved. We're looking at the ultimate shear strength of the fastener. We'll be using the diameter of the fastener and for the plate we'll be use using the ultimate tensile strength, the thickness, the width, and then the cross section will be calculated. Uh, we'll be using the ultimate compressive strength to find the strength of the hole. Remember again that area behind here that can potentially fail. We'll be using ultimate compressive strength to solve for that. 
And then once we have the rest of those inputs, we will find the cross section um, of that hole there. So over here we have our outputs, basically the things that we're gonna be calculating given our inputs over here. So what we're gonna be solving for is the amount of force that our joint can handle under shear, tension, and compression. So this is gonna tell us how much force we can apply to the joint on each side here before the joint actually fails. So let's start filling in some values. Um, just for starters, let's go with the um, single shear or two plate, one bolt design here. Um, so the number of fasteners in, in this case, we'll just keep it at one. The factor of safety is gonna depend on your application. Obviously, if you're holding a person 10,000 feet in the air with this or something like that, you know, you're gonna want the factor of safety to be higher. But if you're just, I don't know, holding up a picture or something like that, you don't, you don't need such a high factor of safety. So just keep that in mind. Um, the number of shear planes, again, is just one. So enter that. The ultimate shear strength in PSI for a steel bolt maybe is 50,000 PSI. The diameter of our bolt, let's say, is a quarter inch. And that rounded it on me, so let's bump that up one. The ultimate tensile strength, um, I'm gonna cheat and look at my finished spreadsheet. We'll use 60,000 PSI. Our minimum thickness, let's say, is a quarter inch. Again, our width will be two inches. So now the cross section of the plate. So again, if you remember our formula, that's going to be the width of the plate minus the diameter of the hole times the thickness of the plate. So that'll give us the cross-sectional area of our plate. So right here to right here, minus the hole. The ultimate compressive strength of the material, let's go back to our cheater document and we'll use 36,000 PSI. And then the cross-section of the hole, again, going back to our equations from before, this is going to be the diameter of the hole here, oops, times the thickness of the plate. Now I have some alternate values over here for the metric folks out there. Um, pretty cool function in Excel is the convert function. Whoops, if I could spell convert, convert. <laughs> okay, convert this number from our PSI units to our megapascals units. So what that did is it looked at our value here and it said we wanna convert it from PSI to megapascals. So that's kind of a cool little feature. We can then just take that and fill it down. I'll go without formatting. And that just looked at every unit value over here and converted it to the unit that I have over here. So a nice little way to kind of give us some alternate units. Maybe you're working with both types of units where you need to convert easily. That's a great way to do it. Now I realize I was actually forgetting some things when I did these formulas. I was only accounting for this scenario where we have one bolt and one shear plane. So in order to calculate the correct cross, cross section for our plate, we're gonna to have to consider the number of fasteners. So we actually wanna take the width of the plate minus the diameter of the fastener or fasteners times the number of fasteners times the thickness. And then that'll give us the correct um, cross section. So if I bump up the decimal place and then enter in two fasteners, we can see that our cross section actually goes down. Also, we will have to look at the hole here, the cross section there, we'll bump up the decimal place and we'll have to take the diameter times the thickness times the number of fasteners then. Now on to calculating our outputs here. So in order to calculate the outputs, we have to remember our stress equation where stress is equal to the force over the area. So since we're gonna be actually solving for the force, we need to rearrange this formula. So we'll actually take the stress times the area. And the ultimate shear strength and the ultimate tensile strength, the ultimate compressive strength, those are the values for the amount of stress that the uh, material can handle in each of these types of stress. So ultimate shear stress is the maximum amount that the material can handle in shear. So to solve for the maximum force then, we'll have to use that value times the area. So let's do that. For shear stress, we need to take the ultimate shear stress times the area that's under shear. So that'll be 
uh, pi times the radius. So it'll be diameter divided by two and then that will be squared. And then we're gonna take that times the number of fasteners times the number of shear planes. And close that off. Oops, enter there. And then remember we need to consider our factor of safety. So we'll take all of that divided by, oops, not two, we wanna go by this cell. So that is the amount of force that our joint can handle in shear. For tension, we need to take the ultimate tensile strength times the cross section and then divide that by the factor of safety. Now, since our cross section here already considered all of the geometric things like um, our di diameter and thickness and all that stuff, that's all we have to do um, to calculate that. For compression, it's also pretty simple. We just need to take the ultimate compressive strength times the cross sectional area divided by the factor of safety then. And then to find our overall joint strength, we're gonna take the minimum of those three values. So basically we're finding the weakest link between those three failure modes. So we can see that our joint is actually weakest in compression. And then one last thing here, we'll use the convert function again, that time I spelled it right at least. So we'll convert that value from pounds force to newtons. And then again, we'll just right click, drag, fill without formatting. And then that has our converted values as well. All right, so now we pretty much have a completed spreadsheet here. We can play around with the different inputs we have. Um, we can make this so now it's a two fastener, two shear plane jointed connection. And we can see what that does to the joint strength. We can see it actually went up in this case. Um, we can lessen the width of the plate and see what that does didn't do anything you know so we can just sit here and play around with different combinations of joints and see how strong the joint actually is which is pretty cool the next step and probably the coolest part of all this is we're going to use the solver function now to actually maximize this joint strength given our parameters or we're going to set some limits on these parameters so it's actually going to solve for the strongest joint within the ranges that we let it adjust our parameters so i have it activated here under this analyze tab. Um, if you don't have that activated, you go to options and then add-ins, and then you're gonna have to go to the analysis tool pack, oh, sorry, solver add-in, and then hit uh, go, and then we're gonna add this analysis tool pack and hit okay. So now if you go to the data tab, you should have this solver and data analysis tab over here, um, or group over here, I should say. So if we click solver, it opens up this window and what we're gonna do is select an object it's asking for. So we wanna set our joint strength, hit enter there. Um, we wanna solve for a max. We could actually solve for a value up. Um, so let's say we just know we need to um, attain a certain strength to hold up a certain mass or a certain um, force or something. We can actually set it to a specific value and then optimize the inputs in order to reduce the uh, let's say number of fasteners or something like that to achieve the value that we want. But in our case, let's just play around with this and let's do the maximum. So given the ranges that we are gonna use for our inputs, we're gonna solve for the maximum joint strength. So we want to add our input cells. So we're gonna say we solve or set this value, our joint strength to the maximum by changing uh, variable cells. And we want to say the number of fasteners we don't want to affect the factor of safety. Um, we'll add the shear planes and then we'll allow it to change the diameter. We'll allow it to change the thickness and we'll allow it to change the width. So I guess we're assuming right now that we have our plate materials selected and our bolt materials selected where we're not gonna allow it to change the properties or the ultimate shear strength or the tensile strength or anything like that of our materials that we've chosen, but we're gonna allow it to change the dimensions of the uh, materials that we're using. So let's look here. Now we have subject to the constraints. We're gonna add some constraints to our inputs. So we're gonna say the number of fasteners has to be less than or equal to two. We'll add that. We'll say the number of shear planes should be less than or equal to two. Add that. 
And let's say the diameter of the bolt has to be less than or equal to 0 0.625. Add that, and then the thickness has to be less than or equal to 0.375. Add that. The width has to be less than or equal to 2 inches. And then we'll hit OK and see what we got. Um, they also have some cool things we can add. Um, an integer constraint to the number of fasteners because you can't have one and a half fasteners or anything like that. So we have to add an integer constraint there. And then same thing with the shear planes. We'll add an integer constraint to that. And that should be pretty much it. So now all we have to do is just hit the solve button and it cranks out a value. And then it's going to ask us if we want to keep the results or restore the original values. And I'm just going to hit OK. And so now it, we can see that it adjusted some, some of our values over here to give us the maximum joint strength. And really, this isn't that impressive. I mean, all it did was it bumped up the number of fasteners, the number of shear planes. I mean, it pretty much used the maximum of everything that we allowed it to change. So if we think about this, even though this example wasn't that interesting, there are some things here that are kind of at odds. So there's going to be an optimal point where the let's say the uh, number of fasteners is going to increase the shear strength always but as you add fasteners you're poking holes into the plate so there's going to be an optimal area where you have a certain number of fasteners that is going to give it the most shear strength but also not so much that it starts to decline on the tensile strength so that's where this can come into handy maybe if we would have bumped the um, number of fasteners up to let's say four it might have found the optimal uh, number of fasteners to be two or three but most likely not four because every time you add a diameter or a fastener with a diameter of you know five eighths of an inch you're, that's a lot of a lot of uh, cross section that you're taking out of the plate so that's where this comes in handy definitely oh that was a lot there was a lot in that video um, it went pretty long i hope you guys made it till the end and i definitely hope you, you found it valuable Definitely let me know if you have any questions. I can always post follow-up videos to clarify anything. Let me know what you guys want to see next time. Um, like, share, subscribe. One last thing, let me know what you guys thought of the animations. They take a lot of time, but I think they do a really awesome job of explaining different concepts. So definitely give me some feedback, drop some comments below. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time.